This thing is still not obvious how I get there, because like, what is that? Like, how, where does that come from? But I have some clues. I have some clues. For instance, Z1, just go back to your diagram there. What's the argument of Z1? It's 2 pi on 9. It's going to come from this pair, right? What's the argument of Z2? It's 4 pi on 9. So this is going to come from this pair. And lastly, this last one will turn out from this pair. Okay. So how do I get this? Let's do some work over here on the right hand side for a second. Let's clear off some space. This is not going to form part of our main line of our argument, but we're going to get a result just like I did with my cosines that I'm going to use to get to the next line. Okay. What happens when you go z take away something, z take away its conjugate? Let's have a go. So if I go z take away some complex number, any complex number you like, and then I go, let's take away, let's multiply by its conjugate as well. Okay? In order to do some work here, I need to take advantage of the fact that what makes a conjugate a conjugate is something that can be best expressed in rectangular form. Okay? So I'm going to write this as, it's any complex number I like, so I'm going to call it x plus i, y. What is its conjugate? Z minus i. Z take away x minus i y. You okay with that? So, so this is just me saying omega is any complex number you like. Let's just see what happens. I expect something will happen because of all this simplifying that's going to happen in here. Okay. Now, what's the easiest way to do this? Hmm. You have a couple of, a couple of thoughts. Um, I'm going to do it like this. I see that this thing with the brackets in different spots is actually difference of squares. Can you see it? Do you see it? See, I've got the plus and then I've got the minus. There must be some difference of squares here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to pair up z and x instead of x and i, y. I've got z minus x there, and then I've got minus i, y. You okay with that? And then here, I've got z minus x again, plus i, y. Plus i, y. Very good, double negative. OK, difference of squares. You ready? a minus b, a plus b, a squared. Take away, because it's difference b squared. So far so good? Okay with that? Let's expand this thing. Okay, z squared. Huh. That looks like it might be useful to me. Okay. Minus 2zx plus x squared. What happens over here? Plus y yeah, you square the i, which gives you negative 1. That negative 1 clashes with this minus sign here. And you get this guy. Okay. Now, this looks fruitful because I've got a z squared. I've got a takeaway 2z. What happens after my takeaway 2z? What's here and what does that compare to over there? X. Now, what's here is the real part of a complex number. That's what cos is, right? That's the real part. Hey, look. There it is right there. X is the real part of a complex number. Do you see that? OK, now what happens on the end here? That's a bit more weird. You get this. I was expecting 1. Oh, but it's just, it can equal ah, 1. Ah, but it is 1. It is 1, right? Because let me rewrite this properly now, OK? This is z squared. Take away 2z. Now, what is x? I had to go back to rectangular form. What it really is, it's the real part of whatever the complex number you were dealing with was. And I just called it omega, OK? Omega. Oh. Right? Then on the end here, what is this? What is this? This is like one of the first results we did. It's the square of the modulus of omega, right? Because mod omega is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Pythagoras, remember that? I don't have any square root there. That's why it's squared. Are you OK with that? OK, now, hold on a second. I called them omega here, any complex number I like. All the omegas I'm actually dealing with, these six numbers, they're all roots of unity, aren't they? Yeah. They're all roots of unity, all the omegas I'm actually interested in. So what's the distance to all of these roots of unity? Answer, 1, because they're all on this unit circle, right? And 1 squared, of course, is just 1, 1, 1. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? So I'm going to use that result, and I'm literally just going to write down That's the next line. The right? I'm just going to write it. Um, I'm going to say z squared take away 2z times the real part of z1. That, that's, that's what happens here when I multiply the conjugates. Plus 
mod z1 squared. Okay, that's, that's just, I'm interpreting that for this case, because I've taken the conjugates up, I've done that, okay? And then I do it for z2, and then I do it for z3, right? Uh, here we go, z squared, take away. Now, it's worth mentioning, the reason why I write this gross long part here is because this is a show question. This is a show question. Instrumentally, based on what I've done over there on the right-hand side, there's no like, extra bits from here to here. Okay? But I want to show that I know where the cos 2 pi and 9 comes from. It's the real part of that first root that I found. Right? And I know where cos 4 pi and 9, etc. I know where the 1 comes from. It comes from this modulus squared. Now I can just, I'm not going to write it down because it's just that. Like that's what it is. That's the, that's the result. Okay? It's just going to take me a long time to write. Would you need to put that on the side of your page? This has to be somewhere. This is not a quotable result. Like, I hope it's not a quotable result because I don't want to memorize that garbage, right? <laughs> um, but it doesn't take too long to know I have to do something like this in order to resolve these conjugate, like, factor pairs, okay? Um, that's the only way I can simplify and get out these quadratic factors, which is a bit strange and not very common. So therefore, it's, that's why it wouldn't be a quotable result. Okay. Even if you just wrote x squared plus y squared, you just say equals to 1 in this case. I would prefer to do this and then do that and notice that it has to be 1 because they're all roots of unity. Okay. That's what I would not, I would certainly not write 1 here, okay? Because this argument that I've just made is for any complex number you like. And if I don't have roots of unity, then that will not be 1. It'll be something completely different, mm -hmm. okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. A bit of extra writing, but it's, it's therefore more versatile mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Far out. We almost are there at the end. Here's part F, and here's what they want us to do. It's yeah, it's pretty mean. Like I said, these would be like the hardest, the hardest um, complex numbers questions you would get asked. Okay. okay. At long last, here we are. They want an answer for that. They want us to know what that is equal to. How on earth am I going to work out what that is equal to? Okay. Now, here's what I notice. Here's what I notice. Again, I look carefully at what they want, and I take a magnifying glass to what I've already shown, what I've already proven. Okay. Where on earth are pairs of cosines coming up? And the answer is, in the question I just did. Right? And look carefully at this, right? If I had a death wish and I wanted to expand out this guy, right? <laughs> if I did that, do you see? For instance, one of the terms I would get would be, just as an example, okay? Here's a term. That guy times that guy times one. Do you see that would be one of my pairs? Uh, sorry, one of my terms, okay? By the way, just quickly, how many terms are there going to be? A one, two, three, three times three, nine. When you go, three of these times three of these. Oh, 27. You'd get nine terms. And then when you go times three again, you would get three terms for every one of those nine. You get 27. Do not write 27 terms, okay? Just write the ones that matter. Okay, now, remember I just said, and this is a critical step. Ironically, it's actually a step you've already done before, it just hasn't looked as bad, right? When I said, look, where might, where might some of these terms come up? I said, just as an example, I said, here's that one, if I multiply that one by that one, and then multiply that one by one. Do you see that? Okay. Um, you'd get cos 2 pi on 9, you get cos 4 pi on 9, uh, 2 pi on 9, there it is, ta-da, I've got something there. But hold on. I've got more than that hanging on for the ride, don't I? Because I'm not just multiplying the cosines, I'm multiplying whatever comes with the cosines, which happens to be a minus 2z yeah. and a minus 2z. Okay? So in fact, taking those three squiggly underlined terms, what I would actually get when I multiply all of those, if I'm doing this right, is 4z <coughs> squared cos 2 pi on 9 cos 4 pi on 9. Do you see that? Okay. Now, think with me for a second, right? That was just one of them. That was just one of them. If I were to do another one, pick another combination for me. Like, actually, pick me another combination. Come on. It's not that hard. 4 pi on 9 and 8 pi on 2 cos 8 pi on 9. 
Yep. With the one in the previous one. Perfect. Okay, there you go. Another combination. Okay. Again, you get the two cosines you want. And remembering that cos 8 pi on 9, we can swap that out for a minus cos pi on 9. That's going to turn into which one? 2 and it's going to turn into this one. Yep. Right? Let's just quickly finish. Okay. It's going to turn to this guy. So therefore, that's fine, but again, there's a 4z squared hanging out the front. Do you notice that? <coughs> okay. So every term that you want that will give you these guys, every single one, is getting a z squared out the front. Do you notice that? Okay, now, hold on a second, hold on a second. This is a result. This is not just equal to nothing, this is equal to something. How many z squareds do I have? I actually have no z squareds. So if you take every single z squared term that comes out from here, every si and that's manageable, that's not 27 terms, it's doable. In fact, I've written it down right in front of me. If you take all the z squared terms and you add them all up, you should get zero. Yeah. 